Hey everybody, this is Kenji Lopez-Zalt from Serious Seats and the Food Lab, and today I'm talking to you about apple pie. Now, we all have different ideas of what the ideal apple pie should be. Personally, I like my pies to have firm chunks of apple with nice apple flavor bound together in a gooey sauce that's sticky, but not cloying or overly sweet. But getting there isn't as simple as just taking those apple slices, throwing them in a pie crust, and calling it a day. How you treat those apple slices before they go into the crust can actually have a drastic impact on their texture and flavor. Today, I'm gonna to show you how pre-cooking those apple slices to a specific temperature can actually help them stay firmer while you're baking them. Now here's how we do it. Start by putting five pounds of peeled, cored, and sliced apples in a large bowl. I like Golden Delicious for their perfume and balanced sweet tart flavor. Now add half to three quarter cups of sugar, two tablespoons of cornstarch, a half teaspoon of ground cinnamon, two teaspoons of fresh lemon juice, and a teaspoon of grated lemon zest. Now stir and fold all those ingredients together, making sure that the apple slices don't get stuck together and that no dry corn starch remains. Now set the mixture aside and let it rest for 10 minutes to draw out juices. At this point, you could just dump the filling in a pie crust and bake it, but here's the thing, apples break down as they cook. Toss them straight into a pie and they end up like mush. But par cooking the apples to 160 degrees Fahrenheit and holding them there can convert their pectin into a heat stable form that helps them keep their shape, even after cooking. Neat. The effect is drastic. The apples on the left here were baked without par cooking. Poke them with a spoon and they turn to mush. The apples on the right were held at 160 degrees. After baking, they're tender, but they hold their shape. It seems counterintuitive, but it really works. And there's two ways you can do it. The first method is with a Dutch oven and a thermometer. Heat the apples up gently over low heat just until they're starting to steam, then put a lid on them. Cook them over the lowest possible heat using a thermometer to maintain a temperature below 160 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 20 minutes. Don't allow them to boil at all during this time. After the 20 minutes is up, take off the lid and increase the heat to medium high. Cook the apples until the juices thicken, forming a slowly closing trail as you pull a spatula through. Then transfer the apples to a rim baking sheet to cool. You definitely don't want to put hot filling in a raw pie shell unless you like your crust to be soggy. Cooking the apples sous vide is an even more effective method that allows you to keep them at precisely 160 degrees indefinitely. Start by putting the apples in a vacuum seal or zipper lock bag along with all their juices. Now seal the bag using a vacuum sealer or the water displacement method to remove as much air as possible. Now preheat a sous vide water bath to 160 degrees Fahrenheit or 71 degrees Celsius, then slowly lower the apples in. You can help keep them submerged by clipping a couple of heavy butter knives to the bag. Cook them for an hour, then remove them from the bag and cook them over medium high heat on the stovetop until their juices thicken. Spread them out to cool just like the stovetop apples. Now we're almost ready to bake. Line a pie plate with pie dough, then add the apples, piling them high in the center and smoothing out the surface with a rubber spatula. Then cover them with a second disc of pie dough. Now trim, tuck, and flute the edges to seal. Then give the pie a brush of beaten egg white and a sprinkle of sugar. Make sure to also cut a few slits in the top to allow for venting. Bake the pie in the middle rack of a preheated 425 degree oven for 20 minutes, then reduce the heat down to 375 degrees and keep baking until the whole thing is deep golden brown, about 25 minutes longer. Take it out of the oven, let it rest for at least four hours at room temperature, and then serve. 